Mick is the director of creative coding at Goldsmiths College, and he's uh, Goldsmiths have sent many many good students our way who we've hired to do wonderful things. And uh, Mick is going to talk to us about some of the research that they've been doing there and showing off his Maximilian Library. So, Mick. Thanks very much, Jules. Um, it's really great to be here today, uh, and I would have loved to have spent more time here because, especially the talks that I've seen so far, have just been really exciting. So I'm going to do my best to stay in that tradition. Um, some of you might know about the stuff that we do, but in case you don't, I just want to do a quick summary about Goldsmiths and what we're trying to achieve and talk a bit about how Maximilian is part of that and what it is and what it does. So I'm in the um, Embodied Audiovisual Interaction Group at Goldsmiths and we formed in 2011. We're reasonably new. I mean, I'm an academic, which means I'm sort of shambolic. I'm allowed to be shambolic because that's what academics are like. Um, but we've got... We've actually grown pretty fast. There were four of us when we started, and now we've got 20 research staff and 20 active postgrads, and a lot of them on funded grants. So we're, we're kind of really becoming one of the largest teams in interactive audiovisual research in Europe. And that's not bad. I mean, we're pretty pleased with that. I think when we started, we didn't think anybody would care about what we were doing, but we just had this vision. We wanted to make something where we could explore sound and audiovisual interaction um, in a way that other people in the UK and universities weren't doing in the same way. So um, now we're kind of able to partnership, you know, to be in partnerships with Aircam um, and also the Music Tech Group in Barcelona and other people in industry, which is, from, from our humble beginnings not very long ago, for us that's a big deal. And we also, um, so, well, the, these are our main research goals. So just to give you an idea of what we're actually trying to do, um, we're trying to explore this notion of embodied interaction, which is about human movement, activity, and uh, hardware and software. Basically, we're looking at sound and image in context, and we're trying to get a variety of approaches, including machine learning and signal processing, and make them easier to do. That's part of what we want to do. We do a lot of machine learning. We do a lot of signal processing. Those two things can be difficult to learn and to use. So we're trying to make those things easier. So we're making tools, usable software, and hardware, for prototyping so that we can do better research, so that industry could use it if it wants to, or maybe in some other way, maybe it can hire our students who we've trained, and also in education, so we can teach people how to do signal processing and machine learning in easier ways. So that's kind of the context, that's where I'm coming from, that's what we're focused on, and a lot of that's to do with teaching people how to do things, making it easier to understand stuff, and then showing examples of how to do things better or easier um, so a bit about the funding, we've now got more than £8 million in grants, which is ridiculous. I have no idea where that money came from or what I'm going to do with it, Jesus. So uh, I, well, no, I've got some ideas. Most of it we spend on going to Barcelona and hanging out in bars um, <laughs> and then you know, trying to encourage other people around the table to stop talking crap and actually write some software, um, which is the main problem you have with academics is they don't actually like to get their hands dirty. Our approach is we like to get our hands dirty. Even if we're crap at it, we, have to, we like to give it a go. We have 10 funded PhDs, the rest are self-funded. We have eight postdocs, and we have very strong industry links for beginners. So um, we have a partnership with Roly. We have partnerships with, um, you know, obviously that involves Juice. We have students also working at Akai, so ex-Goldsmith students are working. At the, you know, they're the lead, actually. Jeff Smith is now, I think, the lead for the MPC at Akai. And they're people who have come to us because, not because they want to, well, because they want to do creative coding. And that's really what, that's kind of what we're about. So our, we're trying to take people who perhaps wouldn't normally be coders and make them coders. And Maximilian's part of that journey. So um, it was developed in late 2009. I had this conversation with Arturo Castro. Have any of you come across Arturo? So Arturo is a really great guy. He worked at React Table. Do you know what the React Table is? Right, so you've seen the React Table. So Arturo was working there, but he was also developing this thing called Open Frameworks. I don't know if any of you have come across Open Frameworks. So it's a great platform. It's particularly good for people who perhaps are just getting started in C++, and that's, right, that's why we were using it to teach, because obviously we do teach with platforms like Juice, because Juice is a professional platform. But it's difficult for all of our students to understand how to use a platform like Juice straight away. So we introduce them to lots of different things. And Open Frameworks is this cross-platform creative coding environment intended really for beginner coders, but it's got powerful features. And Maximilian was like, 
a kind of a solution to a problem that Arturo said they had and that I knew I had, right? I needed a tool to teach audio DSP with. I needed to be able to get people in a room, 20 or 30 people who had only coded C++ a little bit and get them to write an audio plugin within five weeks. That's what I had to do. And it had to be good. But it had to be simple to learn. But it also had to be powerful and professional. There was no point doing it in a crap way. Um, but it needed also to integrate well with other coding frameworks, Cinder, Open Frameworks, and Juice. It had to be usable. It had to work, which meant there were constraints about what we could do. So this was the understanding the problem. This was really what we had. And it was made worse because other native C++ libraries for audio development were, in 2009, in the main, they were difficult to learn and use. And um, they could potentially contained many dependencies as well. So you, you had this kind of issue with um, not only was it intended for professionals if it was a professional framework, but there were other things you had to have as well, like you had to get FFTW to work, and maybe that was a nightmare, or you had to kind of, it was written in C, and there were pointers everywhere, and you were trying to encourage students to just start off by like, working on the stack and then move to the heap later when they knew what they were doing. Um, often they were over-engineered. If they were free and available, they had shed loads of dependencies and things you didn't need. They were, too, they were very complex, difficult for students to learn and grasp, and, off, and often didn't run very well. Like libpd was becoming available, but that was actually over-engineered for some of the use cases. Um, and some of the ones that were good had restrictive licensing. So um, I wrote Maximilian. I had a chat with Arturo. We were in the pub. He was like, look, someone's got to do this because our users need it. We don't have it. You need it. Do it. So it, we wrote it in two weeks. I wrote it in two weeks. Um, I borrowed the structure from the processing language. And it had to be integrated in open frameworks at the beginning. Uh, and any other supported platforms. And, it had, and, you know, we wanted something that would run really well on an iPhone 3G because that was the target platform for a lot of people at the time. It was one of those things where student, students wanted to make an app and have it run on the iPhone. So um, we wanted a minimum number of eight voices with resonant filters, which is, you know, a reasonable thing to get out of a phone. It would be nice to get that out of a phone without too much hassle. So these were kind of the constraints. And it was like a two-week job. Like, I had two weeks. So my course started in January. You know, it was December. That was it. So um, we launched it. We wrote it. We launched it. And it's now available. And it's reasonably popular. Um, it seems to be reasonably well liked for a small, crappy library that comes out of a shitty university. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and people use it. And it's nice. And people give, give us lots of good feedback about it. You know, they say, well, you know what? I actually did this in Maximilian because it was fast. So I made an application and I sell it, and it took me less time, and I had to hire fewer people. Now, other people have said to me, Mick, that's really shit. We don't want to do things really quickly. We don't want to hire fewer people. We want to hire more people, and we want it to take longer. Um, so I understand that impulse, but it unfortunately ran counter to my problems. Um, so I want to show you kind of how, the what, how it's structured. Um, it comes with. Example projects for Visual Studio, we support, uh, we've got example projects that run in Visual Studio 2015, which is, has become actually a really interesting development platform. Um, and we also support, it, support Xcode, there's also command line um, compilations, and it, we make it really simple. And there's only really one dependency that you need, and that's any audio buffer that you like. So you can grab RT Audio, or you can grab um, Port Audio, or it doesn't matter. You can start learning to do it if you've never done it before, if you have a bit of an engineering background or you've done some computer science or even if you've just used Max MSP, you can probably focus a little bit and learn how to do it quite quickly. So that was the goal. So the structure, if I show you what's in main.cpp, um, this is a bi-quad filter. That's probably not the best example. Um, OK, let me show you this example. Right, so uh, here we are, this. So um, this gives you an example of how, how it works. Um, there's only really, when you're starting out, if you're just learning, there's only really two, the two functions. There's a setup and there's a play. And this is just blatantly stolen from processing. Is anyone familiar with processing? So it just seems like even though it, a lot of people don't consider it a professional framework, it's very easy to get your head around. So um, I thought, well, OK, let's just use that, because it's just a way of getting started. We'll just declare all our shit at the top, 
sorry, our uh, variables at the top and any classes that we want. And then we will set things up here. And then we'll just, yeah, we'll just call some functions on, on some basic stuff. So this just plays a sound file, a really awful sound file. So, and then maybe I can overload some methods. I can slow this down, make it really slow. Maybe I can, um, hang on a sec. Let's, uh, figure out what's going on. Maybe I can speed it up. Uh, to five times the speed. Yeah, all right. So that's fine. Maybe I can make, I want to be able to make it go backwards. I want to loop it automatically or not. Maybe I just want it to play once, like this. And then maybe I want to trigger it some other time. Um, so yeah, that was kind of it. Or maybe what I wanted to do was create an oscillator um, call it, I don't know, my OSC, because that's easy for people to understand. And then maybe I want to set the speed based on the output of the oscillator, which would be really stupid. I don't know why anyone would want to do that. But I'm going to do it. Um, let's try that. I don't know. Maybe that would work. Fuck knows. Let's see. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, so you get the idea. So that was basically what the plan was, to do something like that. And we ended up with a range of um, simple examples that showed people step by step how to get started. And you just copy and paste into your IDE. That's not what I wanted. Yeah. Here we go. And run it. Like that. And that's it. And this can be any audio buffer you want. And then you'd be like, OK, so oh, piss off. Um, <laughs> so let's have two tones. I mean, this is like, you know, how do you teach DSP? OK, so now we want to add two sounds together. And we want to think about beating. And it's distorting a bit. There you go. And then you want to think about, oh, let's do AM, because then we need to talk about what happens when you add sounds together, because that's what everyone needs to learn. And you add the sounds together, and this is the only bit that's changed. Oh, we're multiplying them. That's a bit stupid. Um, and we got, yeah, let's, uh, so we do FM. And we nest our objects inside each other to do frequency modulation. And then maybe we can just distort it by doing this. This will be funny. And then you can explain why it's a really bad idea to do that after you've done it, which is, yeah, it's kind of, it's quick and dirty and sort of nasty. So let's um, have a little bit of a look under the hood, and you can see that it's, it's designed not just to be easy to use, but to be easy to extend if you've never done that before. So that was another thing we wanted. We wanted to make sure that um, you didn't have to worry about virtual functions. You didn't have to worry about the strangeness of C++. You used a kind of common header file, CPP file, sort of uh, declarations, definitions, model, and you, uh, you didn't try and do anything clever. We would try and reduce the setup cost by having our uh, uh, variables defined in each class and just using that in the implementation. So you'd only set it up once. The compiler would just use that memory space and just write in and out of it. Um, and then we would compile. Well, normally, we set the compiler up so it unrolls all the loops to try and optimize it. When, it's, when, you're, trying to, uh, when you're compiling it, so you end up with a big binary. And just using lots of tricks to, make, to get rid of the complexity. Um, so yeah, so we've been doing that for a while. And it's still working well. There's a whole bunch of different objects, including oscillators, samples, resonant filters that run really well on embedded devices. Um, you can also write and save in a variety of formats. It supports compression. It has envelopes in it, including ADSRs. You can do stuff like this quite easily and make uh, fully fledged pieces of music. I say they're fully fledged. I think I may have forgot to add the lead line. Any prizes for guessing what this is? It is. Let's try it with the lead. So yeah, and this is useful because, you know, it's sort of a bit moddy, but 
you can see, anyone can see, oh, well, I'm actually just writing shit into an array and reading it out again. So what's next? Well, um, obviously, we have a whole bunch of things in Open Frameworks which uh, make it easier to do other types of things that professionals want to do. So for example, you might want to do some time stretching. So this is an Open Frameworks example which comes to the download pack. It runs in anything. It runs in Juice. You just have to set it up to run. The problem with uh, Juice is the graphics part, but you can use the variables to control anything. And this is doing an FFT analysis of the uh, output of the sound using our own FFT. And it's also getting features, male frequency capstone coefficients, and other types of stuff, which is useful for professionals to use for all kinds of stuff. And it's quite good. So you, it, you can set up a granular synthesizer in something in like four or five lines of code really quickly, really easily. Um, you can also do feature extraction, <laughs> FFT, MFCC, MEL scale, MEL bands. This is the peak frequency. <laughs> That's shit. <laughs> right, and then spectral centroid, RMS, and a whole bunch of other things. It has all of those things in it too. And they're, again, they're designed to be easy. You just call one function and you get that back. You don't fuck around. It's like, I just want to know what the pitch is. Oh, and that's it. And, it's not, and I appreciate that it's some people enjoy making it complicated and efficient. And this isn't necessarily always efficient, but it's definitely easy to get into and it's dead good for prototyping. So um, we've used this for lots of different projects. Uh, the most recent is a virtual guitar system, which um, I'm going to show you a little bit of now, which is part of our European project Rapid Mix, which is to build an API for rapid prototyping. And Maximilian is part of it, and Juice is also part of it. And I made this little prototype, which uh, uses, which you can't quite hear, which is a Right, which runs off an iPhone, so you can download the app onto your iPhone, you just play the guitar, you just get the thing, you just do that. Actually, that's launching. I say it's launching, I don't know if it'll ever happen. But, so this is all a bit speculative, but that's actually launching on Kickstarter on Tuesday. It's not, whatever happens, it's not my fault, right? I'm not involved. <laughs> okay, I'm just doing it. I just did it for some people, they paid some money. No, that's it. Other people who come out of our lab, you may have come across... Um, Bruno Zambelin, who has this thing. Uh, Marco Donnarumma, who has this thing. The OWL, which you've probably come across. Bronze Format, which is an algorithmic computer music system. And a lot of these people have like, you know, grown up and used our stuff. They've learned our method. Um, so what are we going to do next with this? I want to quickly show you our current plan. You can all go away. We're, uh, I feel terrible saying this. And I don't really know how I feel about it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, we ported it to Mscripton. <laughs> do you know what Mscripton is? JavaScript. It's JavaScript. <laughs> JavaScript. But it runs perfectly, and it's really... Um, it runs really well. I mean, and it sounds great. And this makes me feel awful. I feel dirty just telling you about this. <laughs> really, like, why am I doing this? Um, uh, you know, and you can do, yeah, you, you, yeah. J this whole thing with inscriptions now got really out of hand. And we've, pu we've ported the whole thing to inscription. And we've got like uh, drum machines and everything. And it's the same code, basically. So exactly the same code that you'll find in the Maximilian examples. It just has a setup function and a play function and it, it just it, it works perfectly fine. Um, if I create a new thing, I can start the sequencing example. Oh yeah, two drums. There you go. That's what I want. And then this. You can't hear it. That's annoying. Um, yeah, and then you can maybe add this, that's the bass line, yeah, and then maybe we can add, um, I don't know what this is, oh yeah, that's, let me get rid of these drums, and that, this which is like a PPG wave synth emulator, which is built in Maximilian in about, literally you can do, it's a polyphonic synth that you could probably write in about five minutes. 
And now, yeah, it all runs on the web. The whole thing, all the extractors run on the web. Um, and as bad as I feel about that, we've actually created an authoring system to make it easier for people to try it out. It may not load. Currently deployed on Meteor. Meteor's crashed. It's not going to load. Oh, no, here we are. Um, and so, yeah, to give you an example. This might not work. I have no idea whether it's going to run. Yeah, there you go. And this is... Um, a collaborative coding environment so you can import Maximilian and you can write Maximilian code exactly as you would in C++, almost exactly the same way. And your mate can join in whilst you're coding and you can see what they're coding in your shit. They're up in your shit, basically. <laughs> At the same time, it's Google Docs for code. So this is our new thing and it uses the same platform. Um, and it's really just for teaching, and I'm, I'm going to quit it before you all see the URL, because if you go on there, you'll definitely crash it. <laughs> <laughs> we went into a deal with Meteor, because we're doing a, a MOOC on massive open... We're doing this massive open online course of Coursera with Meteor. It launched last week, and then we took the whole Meteor deploy server out, which is great. <laughs> so we don't really know what we're doing, but we're up in everyone's shit. And if you want to talk to me, then I'd, I'd, be, I'd really like to chat to you too. So thanks very much. Very cool stuff. Thanks, Mick. Uh, we've got like a couple of minutes for questions. So anybody? Any questions? Any questions? One there? I don't know how much of a good question it is, but um, have you done any work with kind of Raspberry Pi and Arduino yeah. uh, with this? I think so. Students just did an installation at Goldsmiths as part of their, uh, as, you know, part of their lessons where they stuck it all on the Raspberry Pi and it ran fine. It's designed to work on crappy ARM processors, so it does pretty well. And um, we've also got versions of some of this code that runs on the GPU on the Raspberry Pi. We do have GPU audio as well, but I shouldn't really say that. Um, yes, yeah, so it works well on that kind of those sorts of platforms.